Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is that you're choosing to watch this, I just want to say hello. I'm just going to give a few seconds for people to log on, but uh, while we're doing that, I should introduce myself. My name's Lindsay. Me and my husband Chris are part of the South location with the area pastors for that area, supporting Matt and Lindsay DeVille. Just to confuse you, the two Lindsays and the other one. And so, yeah, we're part of that team. Cannot wait to get started again um, with South Location meetings, hopefully very soon. And so, yeah, um, we're here in the middle of Proverbs. So Proverbs 18 today, I hope you've been enjoying it so far. There's so much wisdom in, in these chapters that we could probably spend all day just going through verse by verse. So I just kind of wanted to speak to you this morning about what has spoken to me the most when I've read through this chapter. Um, I think coming out of this season um, of COVID, um, the thing that's really stood out to me is the importance of friendships. Um, for me, I've had one or two friends that have been really key to get me through this last crazy season. People that have been uh, I've been able to go for walks with, to just another face to see, so it's not just my family that I'm seeing every day. Um, people that I'm, I can really share my heart with, but also can help me and tell me when I need to shut up or when I need to move on from things or just offer advice. And, and what I really get from this chapter is just advice on how to build great friendships. And so I just want to pick out a couple of things a couple of themes that I've seen that can help us to build great friendships, which I think is just hugely important to us as Christians, but just as people, just as human beings, we are designed to be in relationship with other people. And so, yeah, so here we go. Let's dive in. So I'm going to skim read a couple of these verses and um, not going to read every single verse because we could go off at different tangents. But here's the verses that I want to start with. So verse one. An unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. When wickedness comes, so does contempt and with shame comes reproach. The words of the mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. It is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice. The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. Verse 13, to answer before listening, this is folly and shame. Verse 19, a brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Verse 24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So yeah, pretty intense words there. But what I want to pick out is basically four or five things that I think uh, make great relationships and great friendships and basically learning from these verses, starting off with the first couple of verses, it talks about what makes a bad friend, what is an unfriendly person. So if we can derive from this, what makes a good friend? So the first thing, um, an unfriendly person, someone who speaks before listening, <coughs> sorry, someone driving their own agenda, not interested in anything you have to offer and completely self-consumed. So therefore we can derive from this the opposite of those things. And so the first thing I want to talk about, the first quality of a good friendship is about listening first. Verse two says, fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinion. Are you a good listener? Or do you like to jump in in a conversation with a friend with your advice? Are you like eager for them to stop talking so you can jump in with that, with what you have to say in your point of view? Or are you one of those people that when you, we've probably all been there when you're in a conversation and you know that the other person is just not there. They're a million miles away thinking about the, 
huge 20 point task list that they've got to do that day and they're not actually there in the conversation. And a huge key to building great relationships is to listen first, to take the time to really listen to what someone has to say. And I challenge with this today, in, in, you know, literally today when you are speaking to a friend, is just be slow to speak and listen to what they have to say. The second thing um, I think we can pull from these verses about learning from other people. Verse one says, unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Have you ever been in a situation where you've repeatedly tried to help someone only for them to come around in a full circle and end up at the same place they ended up and you're given the same advice and they're not taking it on board? Have you ever watch a friend um, like going into a situation, it's like watching a slow motion car crash. You know what's going to happen, but they refuse to take on board um, the advice that you have to offer or the advice of anyone or even just common sense as the verse puts it. We all think we know best. I think it's some kind of default human thing. We all think we know better than our parents, no matter what age we are. I think it's something that we're born with. We think we know better. But our challenge in the Bible is, is to actually to listen to advice, listen to good advice and to take up, not be proud and to learn from others. If we can humble ourselves and learn from our friends, um, then that will build great friendships. If, if our friends know that what they have to offer, we value, then that will help us. And also will help us to not make the same mistakes that other people have. The third thing is uh, that I want to pull out, this is about uh, guarding your lips. Verse seven says, the mouths of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. And I've thought about um, the phrase, have you ever been caught in a lie? I remember as a kid, because we only ever lie as kids, we don't lie as adults, do we? Um, as a kid, I remember telling my parents, a teenager, um, that I was going to a friend's house for a sleepover, just me and her. And I think it was a week later that I was caught in my own life when I, I accidentally said about a, a different friend that I'd seen at a party. And then it was apparent that I hadn't been where I said I was going to be. And I got caught up in my own lie. Um, and I think... Um, in our relationships, we trap ourselves with our own lips. And to be a good friend, we should guard our lips. We shouldn't talk about one friend to another friend because actually all that says is that we can't be trusted. We cannot be trusted to that person. So why would they ever choose to invest in that relationship with you? If you can show that you can be faithful with the information that's shared with you, then the friendship will deepen, it will grow, it will flourish. Guard your lips. Let's not gossip about other people. The next thing, the fourth thing, um, verse 19 says, a brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. And this is talking about offence. Offence is probably the biggest killer of friendships, of relationships in churches, in many situations, but we're talking about friendships this morning. And you can either be the person that's offended or the person that's causing offence. But either way, in friendships, if you want to build great friendships, then we should hold light accounts. Um, we should, at the end of every day, if there's something that is really caught in your heart, then give it to God. Ask the Holy Spirit to bring peace to that situation. If you've caused offence, then try and put it right as quickly as possible. Don't let things linger. Um, you know, that verse says that... Um, brother wronged is more un unyielding than a fortified city as in it's incredibly hard to break down and so the longer we leave those things in place the harder they are to break down and so correct the situation as quick as possible bring the holy spirit into the situation bring peace to the situation and the final thing um, i want to bring out from these verses um, is about speaking life into our friendships verse four so, um, says Wise words are like deep waters. Wisdom flows from the wise like a bubbling brook. Verse 21, the tongue can bring life or death. We have a choice every day to give a gift to everyone we meet. And this gift is completely free. It's a gift of words, kind words, uplifting words, encouraging words. We also have the choice to tear down 
to break down and to pull down people with what we say. When you put it like this, it seems incredibly simple choice to make. It's just to speak life into situation. But in reality, sometimes if our heart isn't in the right place, the Bible talks about, you know, the out of the overflow of our heart, the mouth speaks. So if our heart isn't in a good place, then often what we say isn't necessarily positive or, or to build up. And if you are finding in your conversations with people that that is your reality, that you find you negative all the time, um, you really find it difficult to be upbeat or positive, then let me encourage you to just spend a little bit of time every day in God's presence. Just separate yourself for a, a few minutes each day to give your heart to God and let his Holy Spirit just do a bit of healing to pull out what it is. Maybe it's a fence like we've just talked about. There's a thorn in there somewhere that just needs pulling out and let God heal your heart. And if you can do that every day, I promise you, you'll see a change in your conversations with people. Um, you, you'll see um, people be drawn to you because actually what you have to say is positive, that you're more encouraging, that you uplift your friends rather than pull them down. And that, to me, some of my closest friends are those that encourage me, that challenge me, that are kind with their words. Um, not necessarily the friends that buy me gifts or lavish presents, although that's great too, I like gifts, but those that choose to speak life into me and encourage me and build me up. So that, that's my challenge as well for you today is to you know, text a friend now, or when you get to work, a colleague, that um, you know, maybe you've never really spoke to them, but you've seen something good that they've done. Just encourage them with a, a small little, you know, sentence that just says, "Oh, that was great what you did." You you'd be surprised at the impact, especially in today's world, that that kind of encouragement gives to someone. I know for me, if someone encourages me in something I do, um, it literally sets me up for the day. And the challenge for all you married people: Why don't you encourage your spouse today? Because I think those people, those closest to us, often get the rawest deal. So there you have it, a few ways to make great friendships. I hope that's helpful. I know for me, all those things are incredibly challenging, but something that I constantly wanna be working on, constantly wanna be um, building and developing great friendships. And therefore, as we go forward, when we face challenges in life, we have that support system in place. Have a great day, see you later.